why doesn't MIMO work in line of sight conditions? And we're talking about multiple input, multiple output digital communications. So here we've got four antennas shown at the transmitter and four antennas at the receiver. And we can write an equation that represents this where the measurements at the receiver are a vector which equals the a matrix from the channel times the vector of input symbols plus the noise. And first thing to realize is that this question arises when we're talking about spatial multiplexing in MIMO. There are other types of MIMO such as beamforming and you can find information about those in the description below. But this question comes up when we're talking about spatial multiplexing. So what does that mean? Well that means we're sending different symbols, different data, of each of the transmit antennas. So in this case this x value here is a vector of x1, x2, x3 and x4. In this case I've shown a 4x4 four four case and so this is a vector of four different elements. And H is a matrix, a 4x4 four four matrix, and N is a 4x1 vector. So you can see here, I think, that if you wanted to measure Y and get an estimate of this, the transmitted data, something that you could do to get an estimate of the transmitted data is you could multiply Y by the inverse of the channel. So if you have that channel matrix, then you can take your received measurements, which are the vector y, and multiply by the inverse of the channel. And then you would be able to recover the value of x plus a term from the noise. You'd have h inverse times noise. But you've got an estimate of the data. Now, why can't you do this in line of sight? And this is a common, uh, common view, a common uh, understanding. Let's look at that in a bit more detail. Well, let's think about this matrix H. You can only do this if you can invert the matrix H. And that's the critical thing. Let's think about that. Why can't you invert the matrix when you've got line of sight? Or perhaps you can, but it doesn't invert very well. Maybe that's what we're looking at. And let's try to examine that. Well, let's think naively. If all of the channel gains were equal, for example, uh, and, uh, and then you've got equal elements, like all the elements of the matrix H, would be the same. In that case, you can't invert the matrix. Is that what we're dealing with in line of sight? And it's commonly uh, held view is that we are dealing with that. But in fact, it's not the case. What we have, let's look at the case. Let's look at what's happening here. We have a, a path coming from the first transmit antenna to this receiver, another one to this receiver, another one to this one, and so on. And these paths are actually different lengths. Now, even though the total length, the distance between the transmitter and receiver, we'll call that capital L, even though L might be very long, uh, and these antennas might be closely spaced, we'll call that delta, the, different, the distance between the antennas might be very small on a handheld device, for example, and this ratio might be a very big number to a very small number, we might think that that means that the gains are going to be the same. But in fact, they differ in their phase. So the amplitude will be very similar, or in fact, for all practical purposes, exactly the same. But the phase of, that, uh, of these paths will be different. And that's important when we're talking about being able to invert the channel matrix. So we can write an expression involving the angle between these two paths. So we've got that sine theta equals delta divided by the square root of the L squared plus delta squared. And this is just using the trigonometric expression about the opposite over the hypotenuse for sine of theta. So we've got an expression for sine of theta in terms of these two parameters. And now we can think about this path difference here. So this path distance, the, the difference between this path and this path, the length of that there is going to be given by from similar triangles. We can draw a triangle down here and we can see that this is 90 degrees. This is also theta in here. And so this path difference can be given by so we'll call this PD, the path difference, can be given by delta 
times sine of theta. And then we can relate that to the phase difference. So I'm going to use the symbol phi for this. So this is the phase difference between the waveform arriving at this antenna and the waveform arriving at this antenna. And that phase difference is going to be 2 pi times the path difference, delta sine theta, divided by the wavelength of the signal that we're transmitting, the carrier frequency. So now we've got an expression for the phase difference between the received signal at this antenna and this antenna in the line of sight conditions. And this leads us to realize that this matrix H, in this case, can be written in this form here. So here we have the matrix H where we've normalized the powers. So the power, because these are a long way away in general, all of them will be having the same magnitude, but there'll be a different phase. So from the first antenna to the, the first receive antenna is a, a normalized uh, value of one for the channel. Then the signal receiving at the second antenna from the first antenna will be a power of one, but coming with a phase of phi. And then the second to the second antenna, I think you can see that it will be coming with a phase of two phi and then three phi to the fourth antenna. And then you can see for the second row here, which is the second transmit to the second one will be a one and the second one to the first one and the third one will be the same trigonometric relationship. So the phase will be different in both of those cases by an equal amount by phi. And so this is an equation for the line of sight conditions. And actually you can invert this matrix. So it's not true to say that MIMO can't work in line of sight conditions. So because we can invert this matrix and we can do this to get an estimate of X. So what's going on? Why doesn't it work in line of sight in general? And the answer is this noise term here. And the fact that you don't know H absolutely exactly. You have to estimate H. And if we pick some typical numbers, for example, so if we had L equals uh, 3000, I'll do an example here. If L equaled three kilometers, for example, and we had lambda equals uh, 0 0.3 meters, for example, which corresponds to one gigahertz. I'll just write that there, one gigahertz which is common for mobile communications, uh, then we would have a value of uh, phi being 1.57 times 10 to the minus four, uh, which is a rather small number. And if we have a signal to noise ratio, let's say for example, the signal to noise ratio equals 20 dB, which is uh, reasonably high for mobile communications, uh, then the noise in the estimates of H using typical uh, uh, channel estimation techniques. And for these, you can see details in the, in the description below the video, but the noise in the estimate of H from this amount of signal to noise ratio would be in the order of three to 10 times the value of phi. So in the estimate of phi, you would have an error, which would be three to 10 times the value of phi. So that means you wouldn't know the, the matrix H to any level of accuracy that you need because you'd have errors which are, can be up to 10 times in terms of the phase, 10 times the actual phase. And what that means is when you do this, in, this uh, inverse here, you're not going to be getting the identity matrix. So in that case, we will be writing H estimate, uh, which is our estimate of H uh, inverted times H does not equal the identity matrix. And that's because of the noise in the system, in the noise trying to estimate the values of H. Now, this is not the case in channels that have multiple paths. When there's multiple paths, the H matrix does not have this structure. And it means that the inverse is not so reliant on these phase changes because the gains are going to be different as well as the phases being considerably different. But when you have just a line of sight, you have this structure here, the only difference between all of the elements is these small phase changes. And so they are very susceptible to the errors in, the, in their estimates. And in the description below this video, you'll find a link to some MATLAB code where you can try for yourself 
different values of all of these parameters and see their effect on the errors in the phase and the ability to invert the matrix. So if this video has been helpful, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the webpage in the description below where there's a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.